react to this. Alright everyone, Dark Side of Japan, the lost generation, let's check it out. If you look at Japan from the outside, you'll see this. Robots, advanced tech. Oh yeah man, they're, they're living in 2050 bro. It's pretty advanced over there, right guys? Basically zero crime, incredible culture. Wait, for real? Zero crime? Bro. How do we... Man, I want to go to Japan one day, bro. All, all I hear is, is good stuff about Japan. But yeah, the food is a lot different, guys. But I could, I could do with chicken sandwiches, man. I'll, I'll live on chicken sandwiches and fries. But yeah, I recently watched a video. But yeah, like, uh, pizza was like $35 in Japan. Pizza is so expensive. The third biggest economy in the world, healthy population. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, the third biggest healthy economy in the companies that are it's a small country, guys. Are famous all over the world. I don't think they said the, the biggest economy, but the biggest healthy economy. Nice. World. In many Maybe it is the third biggest economy. Who knows? Ways an ideal country. Nice though, nice. But if you look closer under the surface, you'll see that while all of that is true. Sorry, I turned up the volume. There is another, much darker side to the life in Japan. Unbeknownst to most of the world, Japan has millions of people who have failed to succeed in the society and ended up completely isolated from it. Oh, that was me when I was addicted, man. Without access to jobs, marriages, and means to live a normal and happy life. Dude, that's kind of me right now as a streamer, bro. But not also not at the same time, because, you know... At least we're able to stream. They are known as the lost generation, and they make up almost 15% of the population of the country. And their sad story is a symbol of Japan's fall from grace. Snap, snap. Guys, is anyone in the same situation as me? And a sign of its disturbing future. This is the dark side of Japan. The lost generation. Alright, alright. Let's check it out, man. I'm excited. While this is now mostly forgotten, in the 1980s, Japan was seen as the next... Oh, what kind of link do you want to send? ...next economic superpower. That oh, snap. Definitely with the, the with Nintendo. Nintendo originated from Japan, so they got Nintendo. Probably, do they have Sony? I'm not sure they have Sony either. It was going to replace the United States and completely take over the global economy. In a similar way, we might see China today. It seems so certain. But, but Chan Japan's so small, bro. It's like the size of like a couple states. Certain that there was a serious. But they're still outplaying us in so many ways, guys. Anxiety. Uh, yeah, you can. ...about Japan in the US, with articles like this one, talking about an economic Pearl Harbor, and how Japan is going to buy the entire United States, and- Dang, bro. They're giga-flexing, buying the USA. ...with movies like Die Hard, Rising Sun, and Blade Runner, all featuring the trope of Japanese corporations taking over America and the world. This anxiety was the result of the Japanese miracle. Three decades of enormous consecutive economic growth made possible by the unique Japanese economic system that was, at the time, seen as superior to the West hey, bro. That's so wild. Western model. Basically, it was based on cooperation between gigantic corporate cartels and the Japanese government. These cartels... Nice try, though. ...cartels called Keiretsu were basically alliances of the biggest Japanese corporations, owning shares in each other and, while formally independent, working together to back each other up. And the yeah, okay, okay, they got like a corporate gun conglomerate or something going on. The biggest Keiretsu were given unfair support from the government in the form of enormous loans distributed by the state-owned National Bank of Japan. This basically meant that these alliances had access to an infinite stream of cash to finance their aggressive expansion abroad, while at the same time, the government would block foreign companies from expanding into the Japanese market. It Wait, why are they blocking uh, companies from going into Japan's market? Guys, is that Japan right there? Looks like Paris with that 
with that structure, guys. It wasn't a healthy system or a fair one, but it was working. The Japanese stock market was booming. Japanese products were conquering one market after another, and regular people knew that if they worked hard and got a university degree, they would get a solid job at a large corporation that would mean the guarantee of a lifetime employment. That would be awesome, bro. Yeah, I should have I should have tried to do work on that, man. Japan was unstoppable and everything was going great until it wasn't. By 19 uh -oh, uh -oh. 1991, Japan had been growing extremely Dude, look at the look at Japan, man. It looks so advanced compared to USA. All these giant buildings where you can like work and make tons of money. Extremely fast for three consecutive decades, and it became the second biggest economy after the United States. As the economy was growing, prices of real estate and values of companies listed on the stock market were growing as well. But by the end of the 1980s, this guys, you, th you think we'll ever have like civilizations like underground or something? That would be awesome. This growth went into an overdrive. We got a sprite advertisement and turned into a speculative mania. Basically, everyone thought that the economic boom and the growth of assets will continue forever. And the more you invest, the more money you will- They are all they all look busy. They got, a lot of them got like suits and stuff. And meanwhile, the National Bank of Japan continued to print out and lend money to basically anyone who asked, regardless of what the money was for or how trustworthy the creditors were. And Snap. I need a loan. Actually, no, I don't. I'd rather make make money that I can keep, but that'd be awesome. Then one day, the bubble popped. Throughout the year 1990, the stock market fell by 43%. Guys, that's, that's regular economic like things, though, right? You know? That happened to any economy. And real estate prices followed. The bursting of the bubble meant that regular people had much less money to spend. And that no one was willing to invest in Japanese companies anymore. Leading to an end of the economic boom. On top of that, in the years after the burst of bubble, cracks in the Japanese system quickly began to show. It was revealed that corruption was widespread and common in Japanese business and government. From insider trading to stock manipulation. Oh snap. The, the typical standard government corruption, guys. When does it not happen? You know what I mean? And fraud and bribery. And that the practically unlimited supply of loans created hundreds of zombie companies. Businesses that would have gone bankrupt years ago, but that kept surviving on never-ending supply of cheap money borrowed from the state. In one decade, Japan went from... Dang, bro. Cheap money, they said. ...from being called an economic tiger, riding... That'd be cool if uh, they just offered, like, a, a huge loan to start a business, right, guys? ...the Japanese miracle to being called the sick man of Asia. But while this was a drastic downfall, it was... Dude, it looks so awesome, though, man. I, I really like the aesthetic look. ...isn't that unique. Economies of different countries go up and down, and that's part of life. But Next. In Japan, it was different. Unlike in other countries, the economic downturn in Japan had devastating effects for a whole generation. Effects that millions of people have never recovered from. Wait, what? Uh, I'm sure every, like, economic, you know, fluctuations have some that just don't recover, right guys? So, why was that? Well, in order to answer that, we need to understand the Japan- uh, Doing a cool fade in, like- uh, right here, guys. Japanese work and hiring culture, which is, to put it mildly, very intense. And it has several unique aspects that make it quite different from any other job market in the world. A corp guys, I don't see any laptops or anything, guys. Is this way- this must be way, way back then. Stock footage from, like, 1980s or something. Corporate career in Japan starts with Shushoku Katsudo, a unique Japanese job hunting ritual that university graduates go through at the end of their studies. Many Snap, I wonder if this still goes on. Companies, including the biggest Keiretsu, hire only fresh graduates, and only once a year, but in mass. Loads of people at once. Dude, look at that, man. Hey, the USA still has the same thing. There's still so much anxiety around, uh... You know, somebody 
potentially having a job or not when they graduate, so. The fresh graduates pass the job hunting ritual, filled with group interviews and seminars that thousands of people dressed in identical black and white suits have to go through. And at the end of it, they get a job. And they keep that job for decades until retirement, in line with another common policy known as Shushin Koyo, or lifetime employment. And their company will then only promote from within, a policy known as Shanai Shushin, grooming and Nah, bro. Cultivating their employees throughout their career to become future executives one day. These practices, which were basically the universal standard. Dude, I want to be a future executive, so we move up in the company, man. That, that's awesome, that's awesome. In the 1990s, and are still very common in Japan to this day, bring stability. But they also create an incredibly rigid job market. If you want to get a good job, you have one shot after university, and once you are hired, you stick with a company for the rest of your career. But if you fail to do that, you are left out in the cold. No, bro. Wait, so at least they have better practices than the USA. In the USA, you just gotta like apply if you don't get the job. You're kind of screwed, right? But they have like a rigorous like step after you just graduate. So they're more advanced in that thing, right? And the doors of most companies will remain closed to you forever. But the point is that when the economic bubble burst and the economic boom ended, this ritual was broken. While during the boom, it was not... Wait, wait, no, they actually cancelled this, what? ...that hard to get at least some corporate job. After 1990, most companies froze their hiring entirely, for almost the entire decade. And they were in What? 10 years without hiring? Dude, that's terrible. ...not hiring any graduates at all, in order to keep all of their lifelong employees during the economic crisis. They eventually resumed their hiring in the new century. Dang, so they couldn't let more on. They weren't growing that much then, right guys? Because they couldn't just keep letting on more employees. Although finding a job became much harder ever since. But for a whole generation of people who graduated in the 1990s, it was too late. They were not graduates anymore by then, and so the companies would not hire them, as they were hiring fresh graduates instead. Those people, whose only fault was being born at the wrong time, missed their shot and fell through the cracks of the system, and a whole generation, millions of people, were left behind, destined no, no. to spend the rest of their lives on temporary, part-time, low-pay jobs. This period became known as the Employment Ice Age, and people who graduated during that time- Man, it feels like I'm in that stage because we're not- we're not making like any money streaming or anything. ...as the lost generation. And since the Japanese economy never fully recovered, more young people graduating in the 2000s and then 2010s joined their rank. At least currently. Unless we get monetized on this channel, that would be crazy good, man. And the period of the last 30 years became collectively known as the Lost Decade. This is obviously tragic for those who are part of the lost generation, but it doesn't affect just the lost generation. Okay. Now, hopefully, he talks about like the what, what the main you know the topic he was talking about at the start of the video is. But he might have just like uh, talked about it all then. Who knows? Just them. Instead, their sad fate negatively affects the entire Japanese society, and it casts a dark shadow over. Guys, there's not much, one, one the hairstyle that is not that popular is just like very short hair, guys. For Japan's future. They, they, they do like having long hair, it seems. Like a little bit longer than the, like, USA, we, men kind of cut it very short, bro. There is an entire generation. But non, 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 non Japan whatsoever. Of people now in their th or uh, not often, not often. 30s and 40s who are missing from the job market entirely. They usually live with and often off their parents. They were never economically secure enough to start families of their own, and they never had proper jobs and careers. Around 15% of the population. Oh, there's somebody with like pretty short hair. But it's not like super, super short, guys. Almost 17 million people are considered part of the lost generation. And they make up the age group that's the most important for an economy of any country. It's the people in their 30s and 40s who usually spend the most. On their families, housing, taking mortgages, buying cars. They are those who keep the economic engine going. No, I'm in my 30s, bro. But in Japan, there's no one to do that now. And it
Uh -oh. Economy is not Japan's only problem that's getting worse because of the lost generation. Currently, the country is dealing with what's been called super aging. Japan has the highest percentage of elderly people, almost 30% of the population in the world, and it's aging more rapidly than any other country. And I mean, they're aging quicker. That is partly also because of the millions of children that the lost generation never had. By 2050, the ratio between seniors and people in the working age will be 1 to 1.3, meaning that there will be almost as many people over 65 as people between 15 and 64. In yeah, I don't think that's a bad I that's a bad thing, right? Don't they live the longest in Japan? In any country in the world, the elderly are dependent on the taxes paid by people in what's called productive age. But in Japan, this will be, at some point, simply no longer sustainable. And on top of that, the lost generation created an What if they have, like, uh, investments or something, right, guys? Another so Hopefully they do. ...social issue that is- But they should pay them becoming increasingly damaging to the survival of the Japanese society, the phenomenon of so-called hikikomori. These are Japanese men who have voluntarily decided to completely cut themselves off of society, and they're spending their lives in complete isolation, never leaving their house and not having any social contacts at all, usually being completely financially dependent on their parents. The first- Dude, that's me, but, uh, you know, I try to make money. Come on, Amber. Go eat. First Hikikomori were members of the original Lost Generation, men today in their 30s and 40s who could not fulfill the requirements expected from them by the Japanese society, get a job, climb the career ladder, start a family and provide for them, and decided to... Yeah, we're trying to do that all. I don't want to judge Hikikomori. Give up. But yeah, we have seen some, uh, like, documentaries about it. Like, way back then. Entirely, instead. But eventually, they were joined by others from the younger generations as well, who, although they did have a chance to join the job market, just found it too stressful and competitive. Today, there is almost one... And that's, it, that's how it feels for me, man. ...million of these men in the job... That was an, unable to get a job as well. ...Japanese society, with many more on the verge of joining them. And the social phenomenon is quickly becoming a very real mainstream problem, affecting the entire society. The Japanese government is aware of the extremely negative impacts that the existence of the lost generation and the growing number of hikikomori are having on the Japanese society. 15% guys, it's not, I mean, with unemployment rate in the USA, it's, it's, it's different because unemployment you know, Te technically classified as you're looking for a job, but mm, I don't know. I don't know. Guys, would you be a Hikomori? Society and economy, and it has announced that it will try to help the lost generation to get back up on its feet and reintegrate those who have secluded themselves from the society. But so far, it had very little success. The problem is that the Japanese economy is still not doing great, and at the same time, it still has extremely rigid work culture. Not only that people are expected to work extremely long hours and comply with strict hierarchy, but many companies still follow the same hierarchy means bad things, right guys? The same pattern of life not always though. lifelong employment, hiring only once a year and promoting only from within the company, making it impossible for the employees to take breaks or even to get a second chance if they fail to get their foot in the door. And so millions of people are stuck and their numbers are constantly growing as more young people fail to succeed in the ruthless system and eventually they just give up. Yeah, I gave up at one point, but let's uh, check out. And uh, thankfully I stopped giving up. I was in Tokyo for a few weeks ago and I was shocked how miserable the people in suits looked. And they were showing clear signs of overworking themselves yet trying to smile. It was sad to witness. Such a beautiful country with such a beautiful culture and people have been eclipsed by this unfortunate fact. I was a, I'm a Japanese guy in the 40s, was, was born during the Ice Age. What does that mean? I believe this video talks about Japan completely right. Especially about, about how the Japanese country, companies get new hires once you miss this Shisoku because... Katsudo, you, you almost never get accepted 
Once you get settled at a company as a regular employee, they'll find they find you as if you're a family member. You start to look down on non-regular employees, which gives a sense of eliteness in a wrong way. The problem is no one tries to get out of this malicious cycle to start and live the, in their own ways. Once you do, you know what will happen, right? You will get kicked out. Japan looks like a great country, but what makes it so... Uh, the under-the-wage non-regular employees who work at cheap ramen restaurants or elsewhere. Lots of Japanese regular employees cry out saying their wages do not grow up. Uh, uh go up. I'm sorry. The reason is clear. Because they are, they are as regular employees. Dang, bro. It's not the, the most utopia, but it is. It looks like it, right? Alright guys, thanks for watching. Check out original video description, like, comment, subscribe. Do uh, all my reactions live on Twitch. Uh, please consider donating, and yeah, later guys.